Greetings! I am Herbert Erpadurp, and today I'm going to begin painting my Crix battle group. I shall start with the Bone Jacks, these being two Death Rippers and a Defiler. I will paint the War Witch Denegra, if that's how you pronounce her name, and the Slayer Helljack at a later date, though much of the processes and techniques I will use on these models will also be used on the others. These Bone Jacks have already been primed using Vallejo Black Surface Primer. With these models being total fantasy, there are no realistic paint schemes to potentially have to research or emulate. You can paint these models exactly how you like. Of course the reality is that you can do the same with any model you want. I do personally like to have some models that look like the real vehicle though. I'm sure there are some people that will insist that War Machine models must be painted exactly the way they appear on the box, but those people can go and buy their own cricks. Anyway, I'm kind of waffling. As some of you may have seen in an Ask a Herbert Erpadurp video, my cricks are going to be mostly purple. So I spray the armor plates and areas that are going to be purple with a base coat of Vallejo Royal Purple. At this stage I wasn't 100% sure which areas were going to be kept purple, so I sprayed just about everything. Be sure to spray the undersides of the model as well, unless of course you want it to stay black or you want to paint it some other color. I had to do a couple of coats of Royal Purple to get a good solid coverage, I think it's a really nice color. Then I added a kind of zenithal highlighting using a mix of about 70% Royal Purple with 30% model color Blue Violet sprayed directly down onto the upper surfaces of the model. Next I began applying Vallejo Model Air Gun Metal to various areas. At this stage I wasn't 100% sure of all the areas that I wanted to apply this color to, so to start with I added to these exhaust chimney things. At least that's what I think they are. I also applied it to these leg parts. They kind of look like hydraulic rams or something, and those are usually shiny. They should break up the two adjacent areas that are going to be purple and add some interest. The next part I painted with gun metal was these leg or hip or whatever that part is joints. I painted the entire cylindrical shape being careful to avoid getting the metallic colour onto the surrounding purple areas. With the highlighting, the purple will be very hard to fix if any of the other colours accidentally spill onto it. That said, the edges don't have to be perfect. There will be dark washes to hide some imperfections later. I then moved on to the next metallic colour which is Vallejo Game Air Bright Bronze. I applied it to the tips of the exhaust things and this shield thing. This is the first time that I've used any Game Air paints and so far I think they work quite well. Being intended for the airbrush, this colour is pretty thin and I had to do a few coats to get it looking good, but that's not really a problem. I also painted this thing with the bright bronze. I don't know what it is, I guess it's some kind of shield or vent or something. Whatever it is, it is now bronze. The rich part with the spikes in it was also painted bronze. This is another area where you want to be very careful to avoid getting bright bronze onto the purple areas. Continuing with the bronze, I applied it to the grill-like thing on the feet. Do these parts have names? The part looks as though it wraps around the back, so I applied the bronze there too. Don't forget to paint the inner portions of the feet things as well. These areas don't really have to be super perfect, they will be weathered and dirty looking later, but I do still try to be as neat as possible. Next, still with the bright bronze, I paint the edges around this piece of armour. This is a little bit tricky, but the areas are raised from the rest of the armour, which does help. Still, I take my time and go slowly to avoid mistakes. I think I did okay. I didn't film it for some reason, but I also painted bronze onto the band between the large upper leg and the lower part where it flares out. Next, I decided to deal with the bone parts. The parts that make these bone jacks, I guess. I painted these areas with Vallejo model colour ivory. Like most light colours, this needed a few coats to get decent coverage. Just like with the metallics, I tried to be careful to avoid getting this colour on the purple, but I did manage to mess up a little bit. It's not too big a deal for the bronze areas, but it will be a little bit annoying to remove from the purple. I also used this colour on the claws on the feet. In pictures, I've mostly seen these painted in some metallic colour or other, but I wanted to be different and thought bone claws would look really cool. Though at this stage, they do look really weird and stand out quite a lot. I toned down the ivory a bit with a wash of Army Painter Soft Tone, mixed roughly 5 parts soft tone to 2 parts water. I just roughly splashed it onto all the bone parts. It's not a big deal if a little bit gets onto the bronze or purple. It can be passed off as weathering later. Don't forget to apply it to the claws too. I went quite heavily on the claws because I want them to look very dirty. After that, I'd had enough time to figure out the rest of the parts that I wanted to paint with gunmetal. So I got that colour out again and painted the parts of the face that look like they're intended to control the movement of the jaw. And this part that seems to hold the tusk in place. It's probably best that I left these parts until after applying the bone colour. It makes things much more simple. Of course the defiler is a bit different. It lacks the thing that holds the tusk in place, but it does have this nozzle which I painted gunmetal and these ball shaped tank like things, which I assume store whatever it is that shoots from the nozzle. 
presumably some kind of death acid. I also applied it to the parts that connect each claw to the foot, this part on the back of the lower leg, assuming it's another hydraulic ram, and this rectangular shaped protrusion on the top of the lower leg. I did this just to help break up the large areas of purple that are visible from the rear. I also painted this grill part with gunmetal. It seems like a lot of people do glow effects here, but I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do at this stage, though I was leaning heavily towards just making it all dark and grimy. Now to add one last colour before doing highlights. I use model colour Carmine Red to paint the tube things on the defiler that lead to the nozzle. A slight oversight that I made is that I left the space between the tubes on the side and the one that leads to the nozzle blank. I could have painted that area with gunmetal for more interest, though it looks fine as it is I think. The Death Rippers also have a tube leading from the body to the jaw. I painted that with the same red. Carmine Red is a bit bright, but we will take care of that later. Now for some highlighting. I start by applying highlights of Model Air Steel to the gunmetal areas. I wasn't doing anything too extreme, just hitting all the the edges where I think a slight highlight makes sense. Places like the leg joint and the edge in the middle of the exhaust thing and the hydraulic ram thing. A lot of the highlighting here will likely be hidden by washers later. Now onto the bronze. I highlighted that with Vallejo Game Air Glorious Gold. Again, focusing on the areas that I think make sense to be highlighted, like this thing with the holes and to the central and upper edges of this shield thing. I also applied it on the upper edges of the tips of the exhausts. I'm not entirely sure this was the best colour for highlighting bronze, it does look very bright, but it was the best I had on hand. Like the gunmetal, it is likely to be severely dulled by washers later. For now, you can see that this highlight makes quite a big difference, even with this blurry shot. It was at this point that I thought I might clean up some of the purple areas. I applied some royal purple, forgetting how much darker it was than the highlighted coat that I had airbrushed on. Fortunately, the only parts that needed a lot of cleanup were these bits of armour on the tops of the heads, so they will all be darker. After highlights and washers, it shouldn't look too odd. Speaking of washers, I then applied some Army Painter Red Tone to the red hoses, just to darken them down a little bit. I had to do a couple of applications of this before I was satisfied. Don't forget the hoses on the Death Rippers as well. And now, even more washers. I hit all of the metallic areas with a very strong wash of dark tone, about 85% dark tone and 15% water. The purpose of this is to dull down the metallic colours and to fill in the gaps and corners and help create a dirty and grimy appearance. I want these models to have quite a grimy look about them, rather than being overly shiny. It doesn't have to be done super neatly, though I do try to avoid getting this wash on the purple as best I can. Those areas will be washed separately. You can see there is quite a difference between the washed and unwashed models. At this stage, I decided that the purple needed a little bit more highlighting. For this, I used Vallejo model colour blue violet again. I figured this colour would be just light enough to stand out against the purple, but not have too much contrast. I apply this colour along most of the edges of the purple armour as an edge highlight. I also make sure to get it on all the bumps, which I assume are bolts, along the top of the grille, on the front armour, and on the upper portion of the leg. This is pretty simple to do, and quite often you can hold the brush at an angle against the part and use the edge itself to help you paint a good straight line. Even when doing that, it pays to go slowly and take your time. It's better to take a little bit of time than to waste even more time trying to fix the purple parts that you're trying to highlight. Here you can see that it does make quite a big difference. It helps the purple areas stand out just a little bit. I then did a little bit more highlighting on the metallic colours. I apply Model Air Steel to a couple of the areas like bolts on the leg joint, on the storage tank thing on the defiler's jaw, and the nozzle. I also add a little bit to these leg parts just to give them that little extra shine. I applied more Game Air Glorious Gold to the bolts on the exhaust parts, on the tips of these spikes, and along the edge of this front shieldy thing with the holes in it. To finish with the acrylics, I apply a wash to the purple areas. This wash is made of approximately 60% Army Painter Purple Tone and 40% water. I simply add it to all of the purple areas. I am fairly heavy with it while being careful to keep it off the metallic or bone coloured parts. It is still wet in this shot, but you can see that the wash makes a huge difference. After this dried, I applied a coat of AK Interactive Satin Varnish to the entirety of the model. It is now time for some final weathering. I decided to do an almost pin wash with a dark colour. For this I used AK Interactive Pain Liner. Pain Liner or Panel Liner? I don't know which it is. Anyway, this stuff is intended for use with brown and green camo on model planes it would seem. But I don't see an issue using it here. Who's going to stop me? <laughs> I apply it to the various lines and gaps on the model, including this vent grill thing and it helps give the model a nice grimy look. You can see how well capillary action works with these enamel effects. It more or less puts itself into the gaps. With this, I think the trick is to go slowly and let the capillary action do its work. 
Of course, you can always clean the enamel off areas you don't want it by using a clean brush with some thinner on it. The satin varnish protects the layers below, so you can apply, remove, and reapply this kind of effect as much as you want, really. Though personally, I wouldn't spend too much time trying to get perfectly neat looking grime. The more messy it is, the more natural it will look, in my opinion. Of course, you could apply many different grimy and dirty colours, but I chose to use only two weathering colours. I'm more going for a well used but still relatively clean look. Next, I took some AK Interactive Dark Mud and liberally applied it to the feet to make it look like the model has been stomping through mud and garbage at some point. The base won't be muddy, but who's to say where this thing has been? No need to worry about being too neat with this. Just slop it all over the claws and on the bronze foot shieldy thing. After leaving the dark mud to dry for a while, I clean up the feet a little bit using a clean brush with some thinner on it. The colour comes off easily enough. I didn't want to remove too much of this, just enough to provide a little variation in the opacity of the effect. I sprayed a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and that's it. My Crix Bone Jacks are now ready to be attached to the bases I made for them in yesterday's video. If you haven't seen that, you will be able to find a link to it at the end of this video and in the description. Go watch it! Attaching models to the bases is pretty simple. I just hold the model above the base to get a rough idea of where its brass pin should pass through the base, and then I drill a hole in roughly that area. It doesn't have to be precise, at least not in this case. I like to watch the back of the base to be sure when the drill is about to cut through the plastic. That way, it doesn't happen suddenly, making the pressure I'm applying to the drill force the chuck part of the drill to slip into the top of the base, scratching the paint. That would be annoying. When the hole is drilled, I like to take the drill and wiggle it around a bit inside the hole just to expand it a little bit. This will make the brass rod fit into the hole much easier. Before gluing the model down, I do a quick test fit so that I can see where the model's feet contact the base. You can see his right foot looks elevated as though he's taking a step, so I won't worry about applying glue to the front part of his right foot. I apply super glue and have obviously still not learned how to hold a model in frame. I take aim and press the model down onto the base. I find it helps to pull down on the brass rod to ensure good contact with the base. Just for a bit more strength, I apply a spot of super glue on the underside of the base where the rod comes through. And then finally, I clip off the excess brass rod with some clippers, making sure that I cut it off such that it doesn't protrude beyond the bottom of the base. We want it to sit flat on the table after all. Sometimes this means cutting twice. And that's it. My Crix Bone Jacks are finally painted and attached to their bases. These are the first miniatures that I've painted for War Machine and I'm pretty happy with them. It took me quite a long time to even decide on a colour scheme for them. It finally came down to purple or pink. I think purple was the right choice. I'm quite pleased with how the metallics have turned out. They're not super shiny, but they still have a metallic appearance to them. I was a little apprehensive that they might be a bit too shiny in the end. Turns out I was worried about nothing. A lot of the pictures of Crix models that I've seen tend to have some kind of glow effects around the grill thing above the leg joints, and I was considering doing that but I thought to myself that grime and dirt would look better. It makes me think more of grim undead things than bright glowing colours do, so that's what I went with. I think I've achieved a pretty good grimy, used but well maintained and cared for look. These bone jacks may even get cleaned from time to time, or something like that. I'm really happy with the bases too. They're pretty nicely detailed, yet simple and don't distract too much from the models that are on them. These models did take me quite a while to paint. I believe I had them base coated around the time I did the second or third Ask a Herbert Herbert, which was the end of December or the beginning of January if memory serves, so about a month and a half. Of course, the actual time spent painting is obviously much lower. I wasn't timing myself, but it was probably well over 15 hours. For those interested, a list of the colours I've used in this video is available in the description below. I will get around to painting both the Warwitch Denegra and the Slayer Helljack at some point. I didn't paint them all at the same time because Denegra and the Helljack are different enough that I would probably be applying different processes and such at the same time. I find it quicker and easier to paint three nearly identical models than five mostly different ones. Don't worry though, they will get painted and there will be videos when that happens. I am working on other painting videos in a continuing effort to do them more frequently because I often get quite positive feedback on them and it seems you guys want them more often. Obviously it isn't really practical for me to get one done every week, but I am making an effort to get more of them out, so you shouldn't have to wait too long for another one. I'm not sure what it will be yet, it depends on what I finish painting first. I have a few painting projects on my table in various stages of completion, so it depends on what gets finished first. Quite likely the Flames of War Stuka. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting or helpful. If there are any techniques or steps I used in this video that you would like to see me elaborate on, do let me know in the comments below. I might put together a brief video going into more depth on it. No promises on doing it quickly, if at all, 
but I will certainly consider it. And of course, if you have any other suggestions, comments, or questions in general, they can also be put in the comments section, or on Facebook or Twitter if you would prefer those. Links are in the description. Don't forget to do all the YouTube-y things, such as clicking like, subscribing if you haven't already, and sharing with friends if you do find this useful. I would certainly appreciate it. As always, stick around for more, and thanks for watching. Farewell.